Hey everyone, welcome back. Hope you have been enjoying the Shadowlands beta content I've been putting out. But for the video today, I'd like to do something special. I would like to go back and address one of the most common questions on my channel since I started posting videos. And as you can see from all the comments on screen, they all center around how I managed to code custom weak auras to beat scripted boss fights in mythic raiding. As you can see from this video footage here, it's my raid leading point of view for the Eternal Palace in 8.2. I was raid leading Cosmic on Frostmon Alliance and we raided 6 hours per week and only formed at the start of the tier. But despite that we were one of 50 guilds in Oceanic Realms to get cutting edge by beating Mythic Queen Ajara at the number 41 spot. As you can imagine, being a two-night guild, we had to raid efficiently every single night. A huge part of our success came down to using custom coded weak auras to beat scripted fights like Zakul and Queen's Court, where all the abilities came down to specific timestamps in the raid. Through these weak auras, we were able to display on screen who should be moving to certain world markers and who should be using externals or healing cool downs at certain points in such fights. This video serves as a tutorial for you to create and use similar weak auras if you'd like to replicate it for Castle Nathria and going forward in the Shadowlands. Now for the purpose of this tutorial, I will be using the Mythic Queen's Court fight here in the video as an example. The first thing you need to understand though is how the weak auras are set up. Going forward from here, the video will be split into two parts. The first teaches you how to set up the weak auras. And in the second part, I will actually take you through the syntax and the coding of the custom weak auras. And fret not, even if you have no programming background, it is something that's easily manageable. Trust me, I have no programming background at all in real life. So let's get started. What you need to understand is there's actually two weak aura components that is working hand in hand together in order to display the text on screen. The first of which is a teleprompter weak aura. Now just to be clear, this is not coded by me. I merely modified the text to display what I want. The full credit goes to the original coder and you can find the link in the description below on where you can get this first teleprompter weak aura. As the name suggests, the teleprompter weak aura is required in order for the text to show up on the screen. And this is something that you need to get all your raiders in the raid to download. Without this teleprompter weak aura, no text will be able to show on the screen. And the second component that you need is what I call an engine weak aura. As the name suggests, the engine weak aura is what is feeding the teleprompters the required inputs and text to display at certain points in a fight. It is in this weak aura that you'll be doing most of the coding of events and it really is about the timing and the action that you need to code. All your raiders in the group also need to download this engine once you have done customizing it. So I would suggest before the raid, the raid leader simply upload the updated engine weak aura for everyone to download and to use the latest. As you go along progressing the fight, you can definitely tweak the timings along the way and just make sure everyone downloads the new engine and you're good to go. So we are in game now and before we talk about scripting the weak aura, let's quickly talk about how to set up the tally prompter first. Now when you download the tally prompter, it will basically look like this. The most important thing you need to do is to click on the load tab and go under encounter ID and change the encounter ID to whichever boss that you want the teleprompter to display text for. Now let's move into the actual scripting of the encounter. After you have imported the engine weak aura, you should have it appear something like that in your weak aura tab. And if you do not know how to access your weak aura panel, just type slash WA in your chat. As you can see, I've imported the Queen's Court weak aura engine for the video that you viewed earlier. So let's dive into how to customize it. But before that, remember the most important thing you need to do is to go to the load tab and once again, toggle the correct encounter ID. So this is really important because you need to set the encounter ID to the correct boss you're working on. If not, the engine will not be able to communicate properly with the teleprompter. All right, now let's get started on scripting the encounter. You should be clicking on the actions tab Tab here and this is where the magic happens. The only bit that you need to customize in terms of code is basically in this section called the on init which stands for on initiate. Click expand here and this is where the magic happens. I know it looks complicated but let me walk you through step by step. So let me switch to this display configuration now so you can actually see how the codes interact with what is displayed on the screen on the left. So essentially what is being included in this week aura on a line by line basis, it's basically instructions on what to show on the teleprompter and at what time and for how long it is on screen 
screen. And also, if there's any sound triggers you would like to use, users of Weak Auras know you can embed sounds to basically alert you in raids. And that's something that this Weak Aura also supports. So in terms of the syntax, the first thing to note is basically every single line of instruction is basically encased in this squiggly brackets that you see at the start and at the end. Now, Weak Aura has done a great job in terms of formatting the syntax so you know exactly where to edit. The text that will appear on screen is basically limited to the text here in yellow. So for instance, if it says sparks plus rank incoming, you can basically change this to anything that you would like to show in a specific raid encounter. For example, player X moves to circle. Now the next important thing to understand is basically this variable of time. Time in this week aura is defined in terms of seconds and it is determined in terms of at which second will something happen. So what this line that we are working on right now means is at 20 seconds, it would display on the main screen under the teleprompter, player X moves to circle. And duration here stands for the amount of time that the text will be displayed on screen. And that is why you look at the next line, it says M, which stands for melee, melee soak charge at exit plus ranks one. And you would see that the time is equal to 30. It is important to make sure that from the preceding line, let's say in this case at 20 seconds, it appears for seven seconds, it should disappear at the 27 second mark. The next line will then start at 30 seconds. So it is important that this time on the second row cannot be before 27 seconds. It has to be after that in order for this to work properly. So that is one limitation that you need to take note of. And as you can see, I added a sound trigger here, which says sound equals bite, which is a weak aura sound. And if you're not clear what kinds of sound you can use, it is conveniently listed in this weak aura below. You just need to scroll down. And as you can see, you can basically use these variables. And if you want, you can also add in your own sound weak auras. It's a bit more more complicated but essentially you just need to specify the path and map out the variable of sound to the path of the sound file. And I guess the last thing that is complicated is basically to address what is icon list. And this is basically what is helping the tally prompter to display the world markers in the actual text as you can see from the video. Now I know this sounds complicated but really you just need to modify for example icon list 2 you need to change it to 1 or three or four for certain markers. And then the next question you have might be, hey, then how do I know what is the correct marker? Well, I'll put it in the description below so you know exactly which number corresponds to which marker in the game. It is very important that you do not modify anything where it says after do not touch. With that said, that is really all the magic that is happening behind the scenes. I know you might have many questions, so feel free to post them in the comments below and I'll be more than happy to help you out. Hopefully this video guide will come in useful when you're preparing for the raid tiers ahead in World of Warcraft and in the Shadowlands. If you found this video helpful, be sure to subscribe. I publish daily content on World of Warcraft, some of them related to Weekora tutorials. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.